Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today we're doing a black IPA called the Ace of Spades. It's from Midwest Supplies or Northern Brewer, whoever you're ordering from. One's a little more expensive, but gives a cheaper deal for shipping sometimes. It's kind of a trade-off based on what you're ordering. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate it. I was thinking, you know what? I always like to have a black IPA on tap in my keyser and I haven't had one for several months. So I need to get it taken care of. Plus I had a few things I needed to get out of the, how do you say, out of the fridge, beer fridge, out of the freezer, you name it. It's a very simple recipe. Um, normally I don't buy the recipes online because it's usually easier and cheaper for me to just do my own thing and buy my own supplies. But during the holidays, a lot of times they sell these kits for either what I call a break even or even below what it would cost me to buy the grains and do it myself unless I'm buying all my stuff in bulk, which I'm not. I'm buying my base malts in bulk. So it was a very good deal. I took advantage of it to fill up a shopping cart so I could get some free shipping for something else I was buying. That's usually how it works. I'm like, what else? You know what? I don't need anything else. Ah, that looks pretty good. That's on sale. Let me grab that and I'll throw it in there. Whatever their door busters are, if it fits into what I may need down the road, I grab it. So we're going to do a few things different today. One, I got the Black IPA, which is basically Brewer's Malt, two row. It's 12 pounds. It's a very simple recipe. One pound of Cara Munich one and 14 ounces of Midnight Wheat. Not quite my Black IPA recipe, but you know, you never know how great it is until you try it. So I'm trying it out. It's got a lot of hops and I'm excited. It's only sitting at about 60 IBUs, not even quite 60, just a hair under, but it's got all the hops I like. Um, the only thing it doesn't have in a black IPA that I usually prefer is I like a little cascade in my black IPAs, but I'm okay with it. We've got a half an ounce of Magnum at 60. We've got an ounce of Chinook at 20 and a half an ounce of Centennial at 20, finishing off with a five minute drop of one and a half ounces of Centennial. And then we're gonna do some dry hopping with some Centennial and Citra later on. A couple other things I got going on. One, David Heath has been talking about using the dry yeast all the time and occasionally I do. I was lazy, didn't want to do a yeast starter. So I'm using Lelemon's West Coast or American West Coast Ale yeast, BRY97. And we've got another catch. It expired back in March. I'm not worried, it's all good. I know it'll be just fine. The thing is super tight, hasn't left the, about the coldest part of my fridge. We're also gonna pressure ferment with the Firmzilla All Rounder. Why? because we're not looking for a lot of esters or anything. We're looking for a clean black IPA, just like a West Coast IPA, but with a little bit of darkness to it. I'm hoping with that midnight weed, I can get a little hint of chocolate, I should. It should be nice and mild, but it should get the tone and the color we're looking for. I've got the yeast. The other thing I'm gonna do a little different that I keep wanting to do and keep forgetting, and then I can't find my sprayer. I wanna malt condition, or condition the malt, should we say. Basically all you do, and this seems to be the unanimous choice, is you add 2% water by weight. Yes, by weight. So I have almost 14 pounds of malt here. I have 13 pounds, 0.875. Yeah, it's, we'll call it 14 pounds. So I do 2% after you know multiplying the pounds by ounces and then do by ounces, or you can do by grams, of course. And that puts me at about, I think it was, 4.48 total ounces of water. I want to spray it in there, mix it around, make sure that you know nothing stays sticky, it should absorb it. But I'm gonna do it the hard way and just pour it in. And then I'm gonna stir it all up. I'll do that off camera. Don't need to sit and watch me stir malts. It's not a big deal, you get your hands in there, you're going to crush it, and then you're gonna turn and you're going to boil it, so it's not a big deal. I do recommend not malt conditioning rye. If you want to, you go for it. But anytime I've put rye through my malt crusher or grain crusher, yeah, it leaves a sticky mess. Um, it just, it's bad, it's bad news. Just don't waste your time. So we've got our anvil. It's a five gallon batch we're looking to brew. We've got our jaded Scylla. We've got a pretty big uh, <clears throat> salt addition too, which I'll make sure to post it up here, but you're talking 2.5 of gypsum, 1.7 table salt, 2.1 grams, all grams of Epsom salt, 3.9 calcium chloride, 2.4 baking soda, and a 2.5 chalk. The baking soda and chalk will add after we do the mash. I don't want to bring the alkalinity up. I want to keep the pH under control. But yeah, let's get brewing. Okay, I just want to interject one last thing I thought about. 
Yeah, spraying it is a lot easier than just pouring it in. I had to go back and forth, back and forth. But the key is, is when I'm done, it should look just like any other grain crush, except the husks might be a little softer, which is nice. And that helps to, add, it helps basically with the filtration of the mash. And that's why I like it. The few times I have done malt conditioning, I've gotten a much clearer mash. And since it's gonna be a black IPA, I can't really see it. So I'm hoping to get a little more stuff out that I can't see. The other thing is, is that when you malt condition, it's going to take up a little more space. Had I not malt conditioned, I probably would have got everything in there because it gets a little more fluffy. The second item I want to mention is that Northern Brewer or Midwest Supply is keeping this conservative at a 1.068 original gravity, which would put you at about 7.1% ABV based on fermentation and your final gravity. That's at 67% efficiency. I'm looking for at least 75% efficiency, which is gonna kick me up to 1.076, which is gonna kick me up to an Imperial at 8%. So it's gonna be a Imperial Black IPA if everything works out the way I expect it to. So, like I said, let's get brewing. Okay, we're sitting at 153. Our mash in temp is 152. They recommended 154, but I bring it down a few degrees. For it a little drier, I was thinking 150, 149, but I'm like, eh, I give it a little bit more body. Not much, but a little bit. There's our brewing salts, they're in there. Give it a nice quick stir. Favorite mash paddle. Some people have asked about this mash paddle. I did ask if he was gonna start making them again. He was considering it, but I have not heard back. Sorry, he was on Etsy. Something's hot out here without a cover. Hey, let's go ahead and get mashed in. Okay, I don't expect any problems, but cheap insurance, rice hulls. And let's go ahead and get the rest of this in here because I got another container of it. Here comes the fire department. I hear that about 12 to 15 times a day. Sometimes a lot more. Fourth of July, they were busy. Okay, we're sitting at 157. Yeah, see, we're gonna drop our, uh, whoops. We're gonna drop our temp, our power control down to 50. And that should start coming down. That's why I say don't do a strike temp on an anvil. You're just wasting your time. Quick brewing tip when you're doing your mash, you're running your research. If your uh, deck is lopsided, on the liquid from the other side. It is what it is, but hey, it's looking good. Nice flow. Down to 152 already. We're gonna let it go for, it says 60 minutes. I'm gonna do 75 and then I'll kick it up to 168 for 10 minutes and mash up and we'll be all good. It's rock and roll. Sorry for the tractor trailer. It's been sitting there for, since we mashed in, it's annoying the hell out of me. I'm just gonna kick it up to 168 and I'm heating up the sparge water and we'll get ready to sparge out. I'll bring that back down to 50% after it hits 168, but I kick it up to 100% just so we can get there quick. Okay, not sure why it's going down, but we're gonna mash out. Call it good. Ow. As I burn myself. See if we can do the ring. And yes, I am getting close to putting the feet on here. Okay, I'm gonna kick this bad boy up because it'll take a little while. And we're at 164, boil, 163, it's going down a little bit. It always goes down just a little bit, but set it to boil 100%, it'll start coming back up. We're gonna let that drain and then we'll rinse the grains and rock on, start the boil. Okay, it's pretty much done dripping. It's 184 Fahrenheit. I'm gonna just rinse the grains a little clean hot water. I got a gallon here at 170. Probably about 164 by the time I walk out here and start pouring. Oh, 
probably gonna knock our temp down a little, well, not much by much. Okay, once I get a little over 190 and 195, I'm gonna pull this off and we'll start our boil here shortly after that. Okay, we just hit 207, it is actually starting to boil. I give it about two more degrees. And there we go. Okay, we got a good rolling boil. And we'll let that go. 30 minutes, we'll do our first hop addition and then we'll go from there. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Got the first hop addition. Half ounce of Magnum. Drop that on in there. I'm gonna recirculate just a little bit through here. That way I don't have any warts sitting in there that hasn't been boiled. We've got 60 minutes left. We got another 20 minute addition. So we're gonna go for another 40 minutes on this boil and then we'll do another addition. That was a half ounce of Magnum. Okay, the boil's going good. Chinook used to be one of my favorite hops, but I like Centennial better. And I've got an ounce of Chinook and a half an ounce of Centennial. This is our 20 minute addition. I'm gonna give this a quick stir and, uh, and we'll go on to our five minute addition here 15 minutes from now. Okay, we're in the last five minutes. I've got my yeast nutrient, half a teaspoon and a half of a uh, roll flock tablet. Yeah, it's good enough. And then I have an ounce and a half of Centennial. So we've got a half ounce left in here. And we get a whole ounce right here. And there we go. And I'm gonna get the jaded silo ready, drop it on in. And it's gonna be dropped in into last right at the zero, but it's fine, I'm not worried. It's pretty clean, cleaned the hell out of it last time. We're dropping fast. I'm gonna go ahead, get it into the get into the carboy, measure it out, and then I'll dump it into the pressure fermenter. But we're at 128. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the power here because I need the dryer power for something else. Actually, I'm gonna leave it on because I need to know what the temperature is. So we'll let it go. Okay, so I had some problems getting the temperature down. Problem solved. Temperature's going down. Never question the power of a sump pump and ice. We are a degree below pitching temperature, so we are good. 66, okay, two degrees now. Okay, it was a long day, but we're done. And <laughs> I got all, all kinds of stuff going on here at the end. Um, basically, we're looking at an original gravity of 1.074. I was shooting for 1.076. Technically, I'm probably closer to 1.7677 if I boiled off another quarter gallon. Yes, I ended up with a quarter gallon more than I expected to, so my boil off was a little lower than I expected, which was very unusual. It's usually a little higher than I expect, which for some reason, when I'm, and I'm doing this, we're doing a dry yeast. We're doing the Lullamans BRY 97 American West Coast Ale. And Beersmith is saying that I should have a 1.016 final gravity. I haven't seen that in a long time. And I didn't go crazy dry, but you know, I'm pretty close to the dry side on 152 Fahrenheit for the mash. But I'm expecting that at 1.074, if we did 1.016, we'll be at 7.7. .7. But I'm expecting we're probably gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.012 or 1.014, which will put us somewhere around 8.3 plus or minus. So yeah, it's still gonna be in an Imperial IPA. The other thing, I always tell you, make the beer your own. Yes, this is Ace of Spades. Yes, it's sold by West Coast Supply, whatever it is, and Northern Brewer. But needless to say, they give you one ounce of citra, one ounce of centennial to dry hop. So I added one more ounce of centennial and one more ounce of citra. So I have two ounces of citra and two ounces of centennial. So I kicked it up to four ounces of dry hop. And then I made two ounce bombs over here that will drop into the fermenting beer once it's done fermenting. We're gonna do the pressure fermentation because we're gonna keep the esters down and we're gonna pre-carbonate. So when it's done fermenting and done dry hopping, we can put it in our keg, cold crash it for one night and instantly have enjoyable beer. Now I did do my one thing that I don't always do on darker beers is clarity firm. 
Like I said, I may or may not have gluten issues, but I know some other people that I share my beer to do, and that way I don't have to worry and they can enjoy the beer, so it's all good. I've already cleaned the hell out of this. I've cleaned the hell out of the scissors. I've cleaned the hell out of my hands. I've got my star sand here. I can spray everything down again if everybody gets really happy about it, but I don't really like my yeast packet to be wet as I put it in because sometimes the yeast will stick around the edges. Now keep in mind, this is three going on four months overdue as far as expiration. Has no smell because it's dry yeast and rarely does it smell. Some of the Saisons have a little bit of an odor. Okay, so we're gonna take this off and I got one more thing coming. One more. And yes, I already put my tilt hydrometer in there and I took a physical reading and we're sitting somewhere around 68 Fahrenheit. Maybe a little cooler because I got all the way down to 64. But I figure it'll warm up. Not a big deal. Okay, so there's the yeast. I'm not worried. I know it's going to kick off. You can see all the bubbles on top from me moving it around from the one carboy to the pressure fermenter or the all rounder from Zilla. Now, here is the next big thing we're doing. Okay, I know you've seen the flot it, which is something like this, but you haven't seen the flot it. Yeah, making sure I'm saying that right, from Trong on eBay. He sent me a beta and I tested it. We had a little issue, it was corrected, not a big deal. It was something to do with the metals. But this is awesome and I'm testing it and I've got a bunch of videos coming out about different types of basically floating dip tubes. But this one has a 500 micron filter and then inside it has an additional second filtration at 300 micron. And there's a lot of really cool ands where you can use it with your current systems and I'll show you how in another video. That's why you subscribe, that's why you watch the videos and you look for the posts and if you wanna get notifications, great. I'm not gonna say that, I hate getting notified. I go on, I find it, it's all good. Okay, this has been sprayed down massively and almost cooked in hot water so I'm not worried. My hands are probably dry from star sand if star sand dries them out. Okay, and this does fit right over this, nice and neatly. And pop that in there, I'm trying to think, did I forget anything? Oh my God, did I forget anything? Okay, you can see the magnets up here. We've got three magnets on both sides. This is two ounces of Citra, this is two ounces of Centennial, and once the fermentation is done, which I'm gonna put it up around five PSI initially, and as it's fermenting, I will keep it at around 10 PSI. But as soon as it's done, I'm gonna drop those in there for four or five days, and then we will go right on to transferring to a keg and enjoying it, probably the very next night. That's what's so cool about pressure fermentation. If you're not doing a Belgian IPA or a Belgian, well, if you're not doing a Belgian or anything where you need the esters, yeah, pressure fermentation is the bomb for anything you need clean, should we say. That's it, we're done. I'm gonna put a little PSI on there. Yeah, whatever, pressure, you know what I'm talking about. We're gonna put this in the fermenter. I'm kinda of concerned about the height, but if it is, we know we can flip that bottom piece down and lower it a little more, and I'm gonna get it in there. I did get stainless steel tops. Ah, these are connected to plastic, I'm not really worried right now, although this one I chewed it up a little because it was so tight I had a problem getting it off. And there's a little pressure in there now, but we're gonna tighten this up and we're gonna put a lot more pressure in there. Thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, I changed the background and that's not a green screen. That's just another background. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and keep watching for part two of the Black IPA, Ace of Spades. Thank you again, I appreciate it.